create a sufficient return on capital for a long time to come? Well, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a 10 word answer to that. <laughs> the, uh, uh, you know, uh, I can't remember all the questions that were there, but I would say that people that are on the extremes of both sides are, are a little nuts. <laughs> I, uh, I, I would hate to have all the hydrocarbons banned in three years or uh, and you, you, know, you wouldn't want a world, it wouldn't work. And on the other hand, you know, what's happening will be adapted to over time, just as we've adapted them to all kinds of things. I do not think, I, I'm, I'm interested in that quote from 1997, because uh, you know, we've talked about this before. We have no problem owning Costco or Walmart, you know, and, and a substantial number of their stores. And, uh, you know, they, they sell cigarettes. It's a big item, you know. It's, just, it's, it's something that brings people in. They know the price of cigarettes. And, and uh, you know, they put them up front. And uh, So we don't uh, – it's a very tough situation. We made that decision a long time ago when we went to Memphis. And, and we looked at a business that was a very, very good business. And it was much less harmful – uh, at least from everything I could find out, uh, it was much less harmful than smoking tobacco, chewing tobacco was. And these were decent people, and they were running a legal business, and they all chewed tobacco themselves. So they, they, they were, and they, they told me that their mother was 100 and chewing tobacco and all these things. But Charlie and I did go down in the lobby of that hotel, and we just said to ourselves, this is probably the best business we've ever seen. Uh, and I called my then son-in-law, Alan Greenberg, and he'd studied chewing tobacco and its effects when he was working for uh, a Nader-related organization, and, and we decided not to do it. But, you know, would we, you know, I see, I used to see ads in our paper from financial companies where I knew they were terrible, you know, and I, uh, it's, it's a very tough thing to decide whether you get in or out of a business. And it's a very tough time to decide what, what companies benefit society more than others. I mean, it's, I don't know whether, I think Chevron's benefited society in all kinds of ways, and I think it continues to do so, and I think we're gonna need a lot of hydrocarbons for a long time, and we'll be very glad we've got them. But I do think that the world's moving away from them, too, and, and I, that could change. Uh, I, I, I don't like making the moral judgments on stocks in terms of actually running the businesses, but there's something about every business that if you knew what you wouldn't like. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, meat packers or anything. Have you ever gone through a meat packing? <laughs> you know, it, there's, it, it, if you expect perfection, you know, in your spouse or in your friends or in companies, you're not going to find it. And, and uh, what you elect to do yourself, if you own an index fund, you're going to own it. Believe me, Chevron is not an evil company in the least. <laughs> and and, and uh, I have no compunction about owning, in the least, about owning Chevron. And if, if we own the entire business, I, wouldn't, I would not feel uncomfortable about being in that business. Charlie? Well, I agree. I, you know, you can imagine two things. A young man marries into your family. He's a English professor at say Swarthmore, or he's a, he works for Chevron. Which would you pick? Because I don't see it. I want to admit I'd take the guy from Chevron. <laughs> well, I hope your daughters agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, 